Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Batasera Nation. So delighted you could join us. Today, we're going to tackle Vulcan support in PCSX2. Indeed, it was back in January 8, 2022, when the developers of PCSX2 announced to the emulation world that they finally had Vulcan support for the emulator. This was accomplished due to the efforts of Stenzek from DuckStation. Furthermore, it wasn't until Batasera 33 was finally released less than a month later that Vulcan support was added to PCSX2 within Batocera. Consequently, today we're going to conduct performance tests of PCSX2 Vulcan vs. OpenGL, comparing three Batocera PCs using Intel Iris, AMD Integrated Vega Graphics, and a discrete NVIDIA graphics card. Among the three Batocera PC systems, one of the results truly surprised me. Which one? Well, let's find out. Alright, so we're about to set up. And first up, let me show you my computer system here I'm running. I'm using here an i7 1165G7 ASRock Mini Computer. And this is running on uh, Intel Iris XE graphics. Alright? So, let's go in here. We're going to be testing two games God of War 1 and God of War 2. So, first up, let's go ahead and choose OpenGL. We're going to be running this on 3x 1080p. You can see that they did a pretty good job at 1080p. Now let's change that to Vulcan. You can see that with Vulcan support, actually it was struggling. In fact, OpenGL performance was anywhere between 10 to 20% better with OpenGL versus Vulcan support. Now let's go ahead and try God of War 2. Once again, we're going to make sure we start off with OpenGL first. All right. At 2x, 720p. Let's check it out. Once again, you can see there, it does a pretty good job at 720p with using OpenGL, for the most part at 100%, 60 frames per second. 
Now let's change that to Vulcan support. You can see that once again, in Vulcan support, it was struggling. And OpenGL performance was anywhere between 10 and 20% better than compared to Vulcan support. And it turns out that that really surprised me because I was expecting that Intel Iris was going to perform better in Vulcan compared to OpenGL. But apparently the Vulcan drivers for Intel Iris graphics cards are not as advanced or good compared to OpenGL support. Now then, let's go ahead and compare that with a Ryzen integrated graphics card. Next up, we're going to be using an AMD Ryzen integrated graphics chip. Specifically, we're going to be using the AMD Ryzen 7 4800U. Okay. So for this comparison, we're going to be looking at God of War 1, God of War 2, and the Shadow of the Colossus. So let us start off with God of War 1. And let's go into the actual game and let's change this to OpenGL first at 3x 1080p all right All right, let's go ahead now and do Vulcan. Let's go back in there and change this to Vulcan. All right, you can see there, there's a dramatic improvement using Vulkan. With OpenGL at 3x, it was actually struggling. But with Vulkan support, it was mostly playing at 60 frames per second. Now let's go ahead and try God of War 2. And let's go ahead and make sure this is OpenGL first, which is OpenGL. And we're gonna do this at 2x, 720p.
you can see that it was struggling to open GL. Now let's go ahead and change that to Vulcan support. And everything else is the same. Let's try it out. Once again, with Vulcan support, it was at 60 frames per second for the most part, at 100% for the most part. Now then, you won't see this type of performance in all the games. For example, in the Shadow of the Colossus, uh, let's compare OpenGL with Vulcan. First up, OpenGL. At 2x, 720p, all right? Let's try this. Okay, now let's try that with Vulcan support. All right. All right, as you can see there, there wasn't much of a performance difference between OpenGL and Vulkan. So again, not all the games are going to see anywhere between 10, 20, 30% increase in performance. Some of the games you will see that performance increase, and others you won't see much of a difference. Finally, you may be wondering, well, what about discrete graphics? How well does Vulkan compare to OpenGL? Well, let's go ahead and tackle that one too. So, let me first show you my system on this one. So I'm running this with an i5 10400F CPU and I'm running this on the NVIDIA 1660 Super Graphics card. Okay. All right, let me show you also my settings here. So right now, I'm running this with 6X. It turns out anything below this, 5x all the way to 1x, it plays really smooth, smooth as butter without any problems whatsoever, whether OpenGL or Vulkan. It's only when we hit to 6x or 4k that OpenGL begins to struggle. So we're going to see how well does Vulkan compare to OpenGL in 4k. And we're going to do a comparison in God of War 2 because it's a little more demanding than God of War 1.
Okay, as you can see there, it plays at 50%, 30 frames per second. It's really struggling. Now let's go ahead and change that to Vulcan. All right, let's try that again. Well, as you have just witnessed, there was a dramatic performance increase. Essentially, the frames per second was doubled or went up to 100%. It was absolutely amazing. I also got about the same results with God of War 1. That is, I also saw a 100% increase in performance when compared to OpenGL within the frames per second. In addition, I also suspect if you have an AMD discrete graphics card, you will have similar results. So therefore, in conclusion, if you're using an Intel integrated chip, including Iris, for the time being, I would highly recommend sticking with OpenGL versus Vulkan. Perhaps down the line, Intel will release better Vulkan drivers, but for now, OpenGL is your best bet within Batocera. Furthermore, if you're using AMD integrated graphics, then no doubt use Vulkan, since in the frames per second, you will see anywhere between 20 to 50% increase in performance. Finally, if you're using a NVIDIA or AMD discrete graphics card, then by all means use Vulkan, since in the frames per second, you can see as much as 100% increase in performance. Well, that's a wrap. If you found this video useful, please go ahead and like it. That would really help me out with the YouTube algorithm. If this is your first time watching a video from Batista Nation, then I highly encourage you to check out our YouTube channel as well as a website at BatistaNation.com. That will give you a great overview of what Batistaner is all about and whether this is something that will meet your emulating needs. Finally, I want you to know that I've got a lot more videos coming up, so therefore please consider subscribing so that you'll stay on top of the latest and greatest of Batistaner. As a matter of fact, next time I will be covering the new bezels and mega bezels featured in Batistaner 33 and above. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you next time about the Senate Nation. Bye.